The remarkable recent scientific developments of neuroscience have provided us with new tools to understand how our brain works and have confirmed neurogenesis, the constant growth of neural connections and thought patterns throughout life, which means our brain is flexible and we are all involved in a constantly improving learning process. Guillen states that neuroeducation offers a new flexible, positive and optimistic approach as it is in line with varied active learning methodologies and because it enhances the development of competencies for life. As educators, we have the responsibility to provide students with relevant information and challenges to awake their curiosity and motivation and develop their learning experience by being active participants of their learning process. It is important to take into account that new concepts will be built on the base of the old ones, and that human beings are supplied not only with cognitive abilities, but also emotional, social, moral, physical and spiritual capabilities, which come all down from our brain. This leads us to a new concept of learning, as our brain is constantly creating the synapses according to the stimuli and changing environment. Each hemisphere of our brain consists of four lobes with different functions. The occipital lobe is related to visual processes, the temporal lobe to auditory processes, and it contains the hippocampus and the vernicus area, which are basic for memory and language processes. Furthermore, neurochemical systems have different abilities to influence learning and memory, as dopamine will help us to have motivated students, serotonin will be present in blood students, while we could find low noradrenaline levels in a distracted student and acetylcholine in bored students listening to a masterclass. Thus, neurotransmitters such as adrenaline and noradrenaline are essential to keep our students' attention once information has arrived at the prefrontal lobes, where executive functions take place. Executive functions have a main role in cognitive and behavioral processes and are crucial not only in our daily life as they help us organize our time and tasks properly and be flexible to get our conduct adapted, but also for our students' educational paths as learners whose executive functions are better developed are often those who perform and succeed best in school and university. The most relevant components of executive functions are the abilities to set goals, such as motivation, self-awareness and the way human beings perceive the world, plan strategies to get your goals, for example, analyzing situations to evaluate your circumstances and plan how to lead an activity, fulfill plans, the ability to start, continue and stop sequences in a clear, integrated way to achieve the objective, control, readjust, and be aware of the time, intensity, and other qualitative aspects. The three following elements of executive functions are essential when planning for our students' appropriate academic and personal development, which constitutes a must for teachers. Inhibitory control helps to intentionally control behaviors and automatic responses so that students keep their attention on what they are doing without getting distracted and know when to interact. For instance, in a role play activity or in a conversation or also with teamwork. Working memory is important for reasoning, decision making and behavior. And cognitive flexibility is the capacity to change from one task to another, mental processes and objectives, which permits us to develop our critical thinking. For example, when proposing different uses for one object and when choosing among different ways to continue story. Students must be able to learn, so it's not only having their abilities, the knowledge, the strategies and skills, but they must also be willing to learn. They want to learn and have the intention and motivation to do so. In this way, the ingredients we teachers can't forget is considering ability, motivation and aptitude in our class. Thus, ability is what you're capable of doing and we must take into account and consider previous knowledge before starting planning. That is why initial evaluation is considered crucial for, for us to to guarantee success. Motivation, as it determines what we do, and attitude, which determines everything, how well you do everything.
integrating these processes, such as inhibitory control, working memory, and cognitive flexibility, with emotional and motivational ones, will allow the most complex behaviors, as learning is both a cognitive and motivational process. Consequently, students need both the ability to learn and they, as they need the cognitive elements, such as knowledge, strategies, and skills required, and also be willing and motivated to do it. Among the different theories, there are three main interrelated constructs in academic motivation. Casual attribution patterns, in which achievement strivings are in part determined by casual attributions. For example, students' high motivation attribute success to the effort on the task. Self-concept, which in the academic context will be built not only by the student's self-perception, but with the feedback uh, received by their classmates, teachers and parents. Uh, indeed, positive self-concepts will evolve with the moral values that should be emphasized among students. Some activities have used um, that help are group and individual presentations, musical performances, dynamic pair or group work. And the third construct to mention are the learning goals, which can be internal if related to their curiosity or their will for challenges or learning, or external if related to rewards, marks or parents' approval. Motivation has a main role in students' attention and memory processes, as dopamine moves students to action and neurotransmitters release adrenaline and neuroadrenaline to set everything in motion. Thus, intrinsic motivation involves an internal desire to engage in an activity to develop oneself, to learn and it is related to a growth mindset, whereas extrinsic motivation involves doing something to get a reward or somebody's approval, so students with extrinsic motivation will evade academic challenges to avoid failure. Emotions play a crucial role in students' motivation in cognitive strategies such as acquisition, storage and recovery of the students' information and consequently in learning and academic achievement. Pickrand states that prospective emotions are directly linked to results such as good marks or parents' and teachers' appreciation leading to a satisfying state which will lead students to pos positive extrinsic motivation. Whereas retrospective emotions such as joy for the results, sadness, shame, pride, disappointment or anger have evaluative factors to develop extrinsic motivation as well. They result from the consideration of tasks one has already completed. As far as I'm concerned, and analyzing the results throughout the years, the most relevant contextual elements in motivation to consider are a respectful teacher, the positive relationships created among students, and relevant contents, which are indispensable elements to guarantee significant learning and maintain their attention, wakefulness and alertness, in which the sending reticular activating system plays a main role as when a stimulus is positive for students, dopamine appears and encourages them to set in motion. Consequently, neurotransmitters such as adrenaline and noradrenaline are released holding their attention until they get the reward. Indeed, this sending reticular activating system is believed to be the center of arousal and motivation in mammals. It helps us in processes such as alertness, maintaining attention and wakefulness, as I have previously said, and it is also closely related to emotional reactions, 
which are essential in the learning process. Hence, learning a language must be a rewarding experience and a positive learning environment. For this reason, systematic, careful planning of learning situations is essential. A deficient language school in Spain teachers deal with tremendously heterogeneous classes regarding interests and ages, which range from 16 to 70 approximately. So planning considering their competences, abilities and limitations, as well as considering the previous knowledge on which to build the new concepts and linking the contents to their interests and experiences helps to encourage them to continue learning a language. Furthermore, objectives must constitute a challenge to make them abandon their comfort area, so the role of teachers as guides who help them analyze mistakes, showing them their positive expectations about the learning process, will help students to manage the stress that could arise during the process. Once positive associations with the language have been created, for example by means of dynamic activities, including movement to activate the prefrontal brain area at the beginning of the class, in which they mainly socially interact, teachers must plan to guarantee the student's success, offering attractive activities in which students will be active participants uh, these activities can also be problem-solving or group activities to boost enriching comparative work. Additionally, the positive emotional components in my class are the key to stimulate a student's learning, as when they get positive feedback, dopamine acts as a reward. Along with this, walking up their curiosity will make them focus their attention, for example using new technologies to present some information, using a story or an anecdote, or setting real examples. All this must be based on mutual respect, knowing each student's name, trying to also guide them individually, and appreciating mistakes as something natural from which we all learn and in which we are all interested. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed.